Okay. Have it on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks everybody for waiting and welcome. I am Victoria Martinez de la Cruz and we will be presenting here with Ashley um, at a in the life of Trout Contributor. So first of all, who we are? Um, I have been around OpenStack for a while now. I started as a GNOME Outreach op uh, OpenStack intern uh, in Horizon project. And then I also did a second internship, uh, it's called Google Summer of Code in a project called Sakhar. Uh, currently, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. My main focus are Trove and Sakhar, where I am co-developer in both projects. And in my free time, I really love helping uh, new people to get involved with OpenStack. Um, I generally do that in a, in a channel in IRC, it's called OpenStack 101. So after this session, if you want to meet me, please join that channel. And Ashley, I will let her introduce herself. Um, so I started working on Trove in January. Um, I've been at HP when I, when I started working on Trove. Um, before that, I'd never worked on open source before. Um, and yeah, this is all, I've just gone through this whole getting everything set up thing. So, well, uh, what are we going to see in this presentation? We, when we were working on this presentation, it's like we were thinking on how the, the process of getting uh, to be a new contributor for an open source project is an issue that in case of OpenStack that is so, so big and it has so many projects. First, it's like, okay, you get involved, you see a project, maybe uh, you start like digging into what that project does. Um, then once you pick a project, you start uh, trying to see, okay, how can I contribute? How can I set my uh, contributor accounts? How I set my development environment? Uh, how I do things like bug fixing, uh, reviews, feature proposals? how we get in touch with the community, which you already saw, it's so big, it's like overwhelming, where I do I start? And uh, that's what we are going to cover in this presentation. We split it, so we have in the first part, we are going to talk about true precisely. And in the second part, we are going to cover how to contribute to OpenStack. Uh, these um, parts of the presentation are independent. The how to contribute part, you can apply it for every project in the stack. And the trope part, well, is, is so you had a feeling of what is trope. So first we are going to talk about trope. Why trope? That's um, generally uh, people doesn't know what trope is. Um, companies that are trying to develop database driven application often uh, find that they cannot get, they have to wait for months to get a database provisioned for for their needs, and it generally, um, this, the time of these uh, increases when uh, the amount of data they have to manage in their application uh, is big, and also it takes a lot, a lot to to enforce security in those data stores. Um, also, and in other case, for instance, uh, there are companies that already have their infrastructure, but they want to try another technology because maybe. Uh, it will make things faster and easier for the deployments, but it's like they cannot um, test a, a new technology um, like so easily. They have to um, put a lot of money on that and a lot of time, and it's really, really hard. So Tro aims to um, provide an easy and a standard way for developers um, to access to the feature of relational and non-relational databases without the, the burden of having to deal with all this complexity. Um, something I, I want to stop here and make clear is that Trove is not a database itself. Uh, Trove, it doesn't store data, uh, it doesn't, you cannot uh, issue queries to Trove whatsoever. Um, Trove sits below a data store of your choice and um, allows you to provision that data store and to manage it. Some highlights about Tro. Uh, currently, Tro support, has support for many uh, relational and non-relational databases. It has support for MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, Redis, Cassandra, 
coach base, uh, coach DB, Vertica, DB2, and I'm probably missing some because it, lately it has grown a lot. And another important thing is that um, Tro has been designed to run entirely in OpenStack. Since its beginning, um, uh, Tro developers focus on non-reinventing the wheel. They uh, rely on the OpenStack projects to do everything, uh, to, to provide their data store with the other OpenStack components. Uh, right now, uh, Tro is relying on Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Swift, Glance, and Keystone to, per to perform its tasks. As I said, uh, mentioned earlier, um, main feature for Tro are provisioning and deprovisioning uh, data store instances, but it also have uh, functionality for administration, for configuration, to, ba to make backup and restore those backups, and to do also clustering and replication with our maybe the most interesting features right now. So um, let's take a look on, on the Trove architecture, because um, knowing what's going on under the hood will allow you to understand better um, how to get involved and start contributing code to, to this project. In this diagram that uh, it, I, I took it from Tesora, Tesora is one of the main contributors for uh, Throw project, and they also have uh, they have a lot of great diagrams as, as, as stuff where we can use. So I took this diagram from the Sora website, and um, it clearly depicts how um, Throw architecture is. Um, this diagram we can split that in two parts. We have here at the left side we have all the components of Throw, and in the right side we have. Uh, the other OpenStack component that Tro relies on. Um, in the very right, we have Keystone and, Neut and Neutron, those components uh, Tro use for uh, authentication and networking um, purposes. And in the middle, we have Nova, Cinder, Swift, and Glance. Um, Tro uses Nova to manage the uh, compute instances it needs to, uh, to uh, provision databases. Uh, it also relies on Cinder to manage the volumes for storage. Uh, when you do a backup, the backups are going to be stored on Swift. And all the images that uh, have the, the information, the bits for the data stores you want to provision are stored in Glance. Now uh, let's focus on the throw uh, components itself. Um, on the top we have the throw API. We have the throw task manager the gate station and the trope conductor. All these parts um, interact uh, between them through a message bus. They send message uh, using this uh, message bus to perform different um, operations. The true API, this, uh, I, I won't uh, go into detail on which, which are the responsible for each of them, but uh, at least I'm going to explain a little what is their functionality. The true API has uh, so the, its main um, purpose is to um, get requests, translate them in some format that Trove can understand, validate those messages, and then forward those messages to the Trove Task Manager and the Trove Gaze Agent. Uh, it's uh, the interface with the user and uh, it's, um, it's, it's in charge of everything of the command and control of the data stores you have in, in Trove. Then you have the Trove Task Manager, which is the one that makes all the heavy lifting uh, as far as um, provisioning instances, managing the life cycles of the instances, and issuing commands to the instances. Um, it's also um, it's, it's, it's in charge of communicating with the guest agent to, uh, to start the data store and minor things. Um, then we have the guest agent, which is one uh, piece of throw that is running in the guest and is in charge of communicating with the data store and uh, configuring the data itself. And lastly, we have the throw conductor, which is in charge of, it's, it's a piece of tower that is running on the host and is in charge of uh, interacting with the database in the host to keep track of the statuses of the instance that are being managed by throw. So, um, like this is, uh, if, if you take a look at the code, which is you are going to do if you are uh, willing to be a contributor for Trove, you will see that in the code Trove, the, in the Trove, uh, in the go for Trove, 
uh, the same structure is followed and it's very easy to, to once you understand the purposes of one of, uh, of every component, it's very easy to start contributing. So uh, now that we have um, the concept for this, let's analyze how is, for instance, um, the process of launching a new instance. When you want to launch a new instance, you will issue a create command to the Turbo API. The Turbo API will take that message and then will forward that message to the Turbo Test Manager. And the Turbo Test Manager will communicate with Nova through HTTP to start the creation of the new instance. Also, it will uh, communicate with Cinder to create the volume and with Glance to get the image that is going to be used to launch that instance. Once the instance is up and running, um, the gaze agent will communicate with the trove conductor to, to change the status of uh, the instance to active. Uh, when you launch an instance in trove, you will see that it has several different statuses uh, going from uh, active uh, when it's already uh, working and running, uh, error if something went wrong, or, um, or building when it's building. So, that is um, roughly how Throw works. And if you're interested, um, here Ashley will tell you how to start contributing to it. Thanks, Victoria. Um, so now that you've decided to contribute, I'm going to take you through the things that you need to know to get started. Um, the first thing that you'll need to do is set up some contributor accounts, uh, the first one being Launchpad. Um, Launchpad is not an account associated with OpenStack, but it is used for a lot of the authentication, um, particularly with uh, Garrett and the um, sites you'll need to use to access bugs and blueprints. Um, you'll also, once you've got your Launchpad account set up, need to join the OpenStack Foundation, um, as well as sign the individual contributor license agreement. Um, then the last thing that you'll need to do to get things set up is to create an SSH key on the machine that you'll be contributing code from uh, and upload that to Garrett. Um, once all the accounts are set up, we're going to deploy Trove using Redstack. Um, this isn't the only way to set up uh, Trove, but for the purposes of getting set up, it is the easiest. Um, Redstack is a script that allows you to install and interact with the developer installation of Trove. Um, to get this set up, we'll need a machine with a quad-core processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, an 80 gigabyte hard drive, and some form of virtualization software. Um, the next thing you'll do is spin up a VM with Ubuntu on it. Um, we want to make sure that this VM has at least access to more than one core and preferably 8 gigabytes of RAM. Um, when you run Redstack with fewer resources, it will often fail. Um, and then once that is set up, you need to install Git and pull down the Trove integration repository. Um, so once you've got the Trove integration repository, you can navigate to Trove integration scripts um, and then run Redstack install. Um, Redstack install will um, install all Trove's dependencies as well as Trove and then bring up the services for DevStack as well as the API and task manager services for Trove. Um, once that's done, uh, you will need to run Redstack kickstart MySQL to create and load the MySQL guest image. Um, in the event that you have to reboot your VM, um, you can use Redstack Start to get all the services back up and running. Um, so now we're ready to find a bug. Um, you can find bugs on Launchpad. Um, and once you've, um, we have a tag that is often on bugs that are easy to fix. Um, it's hashtag low hanging fruit um, that can be really useful for uh, finding bugs that are easy to start off with. Um, once you find a bug, um, you should try and reproduce it yourself. Um, if you can reproduce the issue, then assign it to yourself and you can start working on it. In the event that you can't reproduce the bug, you can add comments to the bug to ask the submitter for more information. 
Um, so once you've reproed your bug and it's yours, uh, you can go to the Trove repository in OpStack um, and then check out a new branch. The you, you can check out a branch using git checkout dash b and the convention is bug slash the number of the bug um, for the name of your branch. Um, now you can start, now that you've got a branch, you can start coding your fix. Once your fix is coded, uh, you can run, to you should be running tox before you send any code out for review. Um, the reason for this is it runs the unit tests and it runs the style checks. And we want to be sure that before we're sending any code up to be reviewed, that it is correct and that Jenkins won't automatically minus one it because it's failing code review, uh, failing unit tests. Um, and then that way it reduces the churn on additional patch sets getting sent up. Um, so now that we're passing unit tests, we want to send our code up for review. But since this is your first patch set, um, we need to make sure that Git is set up to work with Garrett. Um, so this is where you'll use, you'll test that your SSH key works, um, the one that we uploaded to Garrett at the beginning. Um, and you can test that with git review dash s. Um, and then you can use git config to configure Garrett, um, git to use your Garrett username. Um, the, occasionally, there'll be a little trouble here. Um, and the uh, developer's guide on OpenStack is really good with additional information on this step. Um, so if you run into any issues, that's definitely a good document to check out. Um, so now that we're all set up to use Garrett, um, you can use git commit a to stage your changes and uh, commit them locally. Um, this is where you'll add a commit message. Uh, there is a document, I'm not entirely sure where to uh, tell you the exact format of how to, how to submit your commit message, but it's roughly a 50 character title, a blank line, lines no longer than 75 characters, and then I think it's closes dash bug colon with the number of the bug to, um, to link the bug that you're working on to the submission. Um, once you've completed that, you can use git review to send the code to Garrett for review. Um, when you do that, the um, Jenkins will run the unit tests that will include the tests that we ran with Tox earlier, plus a few more. Um, and if that fails, Jenkins will minus one the review and you'll have to figure out why tests are failing. Um, then you'll also get feedback from reviewers who will um, either plus one or minus one your code. In the event that you get minus ones, that means uh, there'll be a comment to tell you what needs to be changed. Then you'll go back and you'll make, make alterations to your change, and then you'll once again run git commit a. But since this is an, a change to an existing patch set, we want to use dash dash amend to make sure that we're not creating a whole new change. Um, and then you would run git review again. Um, and when you do git commit dash a dash dash amend, you will also get the opportunity to amend your commit message. Um, so if something needs to be changed in that, that's where that would happen. Um, and then you would run git review again. Um, so this cycle of making a change, uploading, uh, updating your patch set with git commit, and then sending out another patch set continues until you get um, two plus twos from core reviewers. Um, and then your commit will be, um, there'll be a few more tests run and the code will be merged. Uh, and then when the code is merged, Jenkins will also resolve that bug that was associated with, um, with the change set that we added in that closes bug tag in the, in the commit message. Um, so to, to look at reviews, um, we go on to uh, review.openstack.org. You can on review uh, on on Garrett. You can filter by project and status. You can also in your own um, settings add projects that you want to watch. So you can specifically look at the projects that you actually want to see reviews for when you when you click on the list of watch changes. Um, 
when reviewing code, if it looks okay, you can submit a plus one. Um, if there's something you don't understand or you would like clarification on, you can submit comments without a rating. Um, and in the event that you would like, if there's something that you see that's not quite right that you would like to be changed before you approve the, say that the code is good to go in, you would submit that comment with a minus one. Um, but I'll, I'll, the, you should always, if you're submitting a minus one, be providing some feedback as to why there is a minus one. Um, because a minus one without any information is pretty useless. Um, so at some point you're going to want to submit a feature proposal. Um, one way to do this would be to add an item to the agenda of the weekly meeting on IRC um, and that will allow you to, when you attend the weekly meeting, bring that up and talk about it with the community. Um, we c you can also, after that conversation, send out a proposal to the mailing list. Um, and then there will be uh, things like blueprints get created as, as part of this and part of the discussion that happens. Um, when you send out something to the mailing list, make sure that you follow the thread and, and can incorporate any feedback that gets given. Um, so now I'm going to talk about how to get involved. On Freenode, there are a number of IRC channels that, that we use. Um, Tro uh, Trove has its own OpenStack Trove. The weekly team meeting gets... Um, gets done in uh, OpenStack Meeting Alt. Then there's uh, OpenStack Dev and OpenStack 101. Uh, OpenStack 101 is great for really beginner things that you, you don't want to seem silly, but you know it, everyone has to start somewhere and there's no judgment there. And, and people in the community are generally really, really happy to help and provide feedback um, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, also, there's the OpenStack and the OpenStack Dev mailing lists that you can subscribe to an email. Um, and then other things that you can do is uh, sign up to askopenstack.org. Um, that's a place where you can ask and answer questions and see the answers to other people's questions that they've asked. Um, you can come to the summits and attend Trove specific sessions. There's the mid-cycle meetups that happen between the summits and the, in the lead up to those there's conversation on the weekly meeting. Um, and then there's the OpenStack user groups, which you can look and see if there's one near you to find out what's going on. Um, and now on to tips and tricks. Uh, Victoria, did you want to start? Sure, yeah. Um, tips and tricks. Some um, stuff we have been learning in our experience in OpenStack is um, don't ask if you can ask in IRC. Just ask. I have always seen in the uh, newcomer chat that people say, hey, um, uh, can I ask a question? <laughs> it's generally not advised because developers uh, that are working full time in the projects are really busy and they will look at that and, and they, they won't come back later. And probably if you ask first and just leave that question so, so everybody can answer, uh, you will get a response uh, quicker than if you ask if you can ask. Also, I have seen a lot that um, many people send private message to the members of the community directly. Um, is, uh, this is, um, I would say, you, sh you shouldn't do this because for several reasons. Not because you are bothering anyone, but because uh, OpenStack is an open community and if you ask things openly, uh, probably you will get uh, feedback uh, quicker you will get more feedback from different people and people that would have your same concern will be able to look at the logs and get their concerns replied without having to ask again. All right, so um, the next one is if you're new to reviewing, um, it is a really good idea to read what other people are writing on code reviews. Um, understanding what other people are saying in reviews uh, helps you to understand the code and in, some, in, in a lot of cases can help you to better identify the sorts of things that can become issues. Um, in the event that you're working on, on a bug and you're not quite sure on your fix, um, it's always perfectly fine to, if you've got a solution and you would like feedback, ask the people in IRC. Um, people, uh, 
the, the developers are happy to provide feedback there and give you the pros and cons of the solution that you've come up with and maybe even make some new suggestions. So when you are fixing a bug or you are working on a feature or you are trying to deploy OpenStack and you are hitting with, with uh, a lot of errors, um, take, a look, take another task and get your mind away from it because of it is really common that I, I saw people struggling with the same issue and they're like trying and trying and trying and they get exhausted like trying to solve the same thing and they waste like days for that. And if you put your mind in something else, you will probably come back with a different perspective and will be able to solve this. But in the case that you are still blocked and you have been passing hours and, and days and weeks and you have the same issue as someone in the community, uh, make sure that you make constant questions. Uh, like, for instance, if you are having a problem with a component in OpenStack, check the logs, try to uh, see that it's something odd as you will generally get a trace and ask the community in one of the channels we mentioned, hey, I have this issue in this module and I'm getting this trace. So people will be able to help in, in a more practical way. Okay, and so when it comes to having issues and, and wanting to follow up traces, you don't want to be pasting traces and logs into IRC. It makes a mess and oftentimes you'll get blocked for sending too many messages all at once. Um, for that, you can use paste.openstack.org. Um, essentially, you can paste your traces and your logs in there and you're provided with a link that you can then put into IRC um, and it's much more effective. Uh, one other tool that is really useful is Etherpad OpenStack um, and that's useful for collaborating with other people. Uh, you, you get a notepad that a bunch of people can contribute to um, and this is really useful like on Trove we use it for the weekly team meeting and for whenever there's sessions um, say at the summit or at the mid-cycle meetup so that, others, so that people can see what's happening and contribute to the document. Um, I think that was is that yep so if anybody wants to contact us you can find us in the in the IRC rooms these are our our IRC NICs uh, and if you want to access the slides from this presentation um, Victoria's put them up on speaker deck yeah. uh, do we have any questions and if there are any questions can you use the mic over there so that we can get them on the video Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, there is a question? Yeah. Yep. Go for it. So, before I join the meetings, is there a way to sort of get uh, past history of where the project's going, sort of like around scalability and um, robustness and stuff like that? So, there projects? are <laughs> logs from the previous meeting, uh, meetings, um, like the IRC logs are all accessible. Um, and the meetings use, I think, meeting bot or something like that that records all the minutes of the meeting that you can then go through the previous meetings and see what's happened. And, and I think there's a lot of, a lot of the, pro all the project information is available on OpenStack's infrastructure, like the wikis and that sort of thing. Like blueprints and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Could you just put up the previous slide so we could? Oh. Oh, good call. <laughs> yeah, um, when you assign yourself a bug, um, I, I was wondering, are there times when um, bugs remain open for a long time, you know, and, and is there a process for uh, pinging the, the bug owner and asking him to either uh, make progress on it or reassign it? Um, what's the... Um, the well, yeah, actually it's really common that there are um, contributors that take a bug and maybe they couldn't solve it and they have uh, assigned it for months and months. If you see a bug you are interested about mm -hmm. and you haven't seen activity like in two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, feel free to get in touch with that contributor and ask him. You generally 
uh, a good idea to contact them first because they might be working on it and <laughs> yeah. they probably didn't say anything to the community. But get in touch with them, ask them, and if you don't get a response, then feel free to grab it. Okay. And also, if you're new to a project, uh, is it uh, better to uh, look for um, like l low severity bugs uh, to, to get started, uh, or it, it doesn't matter? You can jump right in and, and try to fix something that is um, either critical or important. Well, I would say that it's general advice that you take a low or medium um, priority bug because. Um, critical or high uh, are generally taken, but the more active members in the community and it's expected that they are quickly fixed. If Got you it. are getting involved, just like given your first steps, you will be less pressure if you take a low or medium. Okay. Thank uh, you. Important thing. Mm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I apologize if this isn't the correct place to ask, but I'm a little confused on the architecture and well, basically, for this image, does Trove actually do the install of a database, or is that meant to be as part of the image? Uh, how does it work with config configuration management, like Puppet? Like, where's the relation there? Like, which one handles That's what aspect? That's actually a great question. <laughs> I forgot to mention in the presentation, but uh, the image creation process is something that you have to do apart from Trove. Is um, there are tools in OpenStack? There is one tool that is called this Image Builder that allows you to create an image and uh, add elements to that image. When so being elements, for instance, in this case of Throw, you will have to install the case agent and you will have to store the data store you want to install. For instance, to create a MySQL database, you have to install the version of MySQL you want and you will have to install apart the case agent. Once you have that image created, you have to upload that image to Glance. And for automation, I will have to come back for, to you for that. Uh, how, how are the features uh, for, a, for a release kind of determined? I mean, what is the process for taking account of you know, the customer requirements? I mean, the various instances where uh, Trove is getting deployed in the field, how does that inf inputs come back into the, into the feature uh, <coughs> process? Uh, and how does that get determined? I want to that. Sorry, I'm, I misheard what was... Could you repeat the question? Uh, how, how do the features for a release of a Trove release get determined and what, what features you want to add? And how does that take into account the requirements coming from the customers or the users of, uh, of Trove? So uh, generally the, the features are discussed uh, when the cycle for, for the, the OpenStack cycle starts, like this week. <laughs> And uh, then we have uh, like a period in which specs for these features are proposed and reviewed by the, the team members. Um, in this presentation, we only mentioned that if you have a, a, a feature proposal in mind, get in touch with the team so they can guide you to that process because it's quite a long process and, and probably uh, you want to discuss with the community first. If you are here, awesome, you have the community here so you can um, discuss your feature in person. But if um, maybe you are not in, in the same place that the developers, you want to join an IRC or in the newsletter, um, the mailing list, sorry, and uh, say, okay, I have this feature. Um, what do you think? How can we uh, develop it? When we can develop it? And then that process of the spec and thing I, I was mentioning starts. That's answer the question. Um, do you have plans to integrate with uh, Heat or use Heat for the uh, instance um, provisioning and orchestration? So we are using Heat right now, okay. but uh, for a different purpose. Um, perhaps uh, Amrit or someone in the audience, that maybe yeah, more involved with that, can reply this. Sorry, what do you want to use Heat for? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to use Heat to provision Trove, or do you want to have Trove use Heat to provision Nova? What are you asking? Um, the latter. I was wondering if it makes sense for uh, Trove to use Heat orchestration to provision and orchestrate and automate um, instances. So Trove has some support right now for Heat, or in hmm. some cases where we will be using Heat, um, but you can use Trove without Heat as well. That has support in part of Okay. 
I think a, a use case where that might be necessary is when we get into clustering or highly available database scenarios. So we already have support for clustering and replication. That was on one of their slides. And, uh, so that's in, in the open source trove today? Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. And, um, so, since this is an HP, do, do you, do you, some of you associated with HP, when, when will the trove with dev platform uh, accommodate those <laughs> different database? We can, I'm the person not to, we can talk after. Great, let's talk, okay, thanks. And any other questions? Well, it looks like we're out of time. <laughs> In case you guys are interested, I'm going to ask everybody here who's a Trove contributor to raise our hands, okay? So you wanted to meet people who are working on Trove? We're all here. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the right place. And work with them as well. We start with them. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.